the barred owl, the great horned owl, and the great blue heron. My name is Robert Boyd. For my final project, I am tasked with recording the nesting behavior of one of these three magnificent birds. But before I film one of these nests, I first have to find them within the college woods. Containing over 10 miles of trails, the woods surrounding William and Mary's Lake Matoka are a massive area in which to search. Following a pair of barred owls from the William and Mary campus, my search takes me to Compton Drive, one of the roads bordering the college woods. The barred owls are particularly active this time of year, engaging in feeding behavior and calling to one another. The chance seems good that there is a nest nearby. But I make an unfortunate discovery. A barred owl, dead on the side of the road. Perhaps it was killed in a car collision. As I observe this animal's corpse, I can hear its mate calling nearby. If the pair of barred owls have already mated and given birth to young, the remaining owl may be able to take care of the nest on its own but my chance of finding this nest has just been cut in half. Unfortunately, it's time for me to move on. Moving deeper into Matoka Woods, I come into contact with another potential subject, the Great Horned Owl. Just a month ago, they could be heard calling to one another, but recently they have grown silent, making them much more difficult to find. Matoka Woods has many trees. I find myself having to rely on the mobbing behavior of crows, follow the sound of enraged birds, and you'll likely find an owl. Unfortunately, there is a downside to this plan. The normally placid Great Horned Owl becomes quite agitated during these mobbing events, and I now find that it flees whenever I try to approach it. The nest is probably nearby, but it's difficult to tell which of the tall pine trees hides it. Under these circumstances, it may take some time to find what I am looking for, and the project is almost due. I decide to shift my attention to a potentially easier subject. Farther up the trail, I find what I'm looking for. A cluster of great blue heron nests. I have finally found a reliable subject, but there is another problem. From my vantage point, I cannot see within the nest itself. In order to see whether any eggs have hatched, I will have to get much closer. Entering the woods from the opposite direction, I attempt to follow the bank of the Matoka Lake to the nesting site, but I run into an unanticipated obstacle. Blocking my path is one of the many ravines that crisscross the college woods. Crossing over it would be very difficult, and I would lose valuable time. It takes some effort to scout out another, longer route that skirts around the ravine, but finally I am able to make my way to the nest site. Immediately, I know I'm in the right place. Everywhere I look, there are empty egg cases and scattered feathers. Several times, I pass the grisly remains of wading birds, serving as both food sources and nesting sites for a variety of invertebrate scavengers. Towering above this chaos, this carnal house, is a tree containing the heron nests. Now, all I have to do is get my camera elevated high enough so that I can look into one of these nests. I travel out of the woods to gather supplies for this endeavor when I make an exciting discovery. Another pair of barred owls examining a hollow in a tree. It seems that I may have stumbled into a barred owl nest. Now I have two nesting sites to potentially film. Of course, this added nesting site means added work. Several aching muscles later, I have succeeded in dragging half a dozen bamboo shoots and two steel extendable poles to each nesting site. 
I jerry-rig these together with my GoPro camera with the aim of getting this camera up these tall trees and into the nests. There are mixed results. The heron nest is so high up that the massive pole jerry-rigged from bamboo and extendable metal literally bends under its own weight. Multiple attempts are made. All of them fail. As much as I hate to admit it, filming inside the great blue heron nest is no longer an option. And what about the barred owls? Their tree hollow is far closer to the ground, so the composite rod I build is sturdier. Finally, I am able to get a clear view of the hollow inside a potential nest. But there's nothing there. No babies, no eggs, no gathered sticks or leaves, no dead prey, nothing. In desperation, I check another nearby tree hollow, but it's also empty. Either I simply haven't found the right tree, or these owls haven't started nesting yet, or perhaps their babies have already fledged. Either way, there is nothing to see. In the end, I was unable to capture the nesting behavior I desired. I'm sorry. Matoka is a beautiful, massive, expansive environment, and I am only one cameraman.